The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. So it's a pleasure to see you this morning by the grace of God and that we are gathered here to worship together, to experience God's love together. So I welcome all of you to our morning service, to our service this morning. It's not a morning prayer. To our service this morning, and I hope you're all going to enjoy. So thank you very much and uh, welcome. Speak his praise and everywhere above below his will obey you spirit for free I saw him where it will in prophet what he spoke of all he speaks still he establishes his law and changes each our star deep written upon the human atonsi Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Mercy forever. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, 
and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Since we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, We take our seats for the reading of the lessons. <clears throat> In the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for, their, for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. read together Psalm 19 I will read with the asterisk if you will finish the verse the heavens declare the glory of God and the shows his one day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world in the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. He comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. He rejoices like a champion who runs its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing can save you from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, and he delights in the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the home. By them also is your servant enlightened. Who can tell how often he offends? Above all, keep your servant from, from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the, in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Holy Ghost Prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. <clears throat> the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then say to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body after he was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Thank, you, Lord Thank you, God, once more for gathering us here so that we may listen to your voice and we open our hearts and our minds 
before you, that you speak to us through your servant. This we ask through Christ's name. Amen. So we may take our seats. <coughs> and once again, welcome uh, this morning. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless us. It is good to see you uh, once more. Again, uh, God prepared each one of us to come here this morning. We don't just take it for granted. It's by God's grace. So my week has been good, and uh, the weather has been good for me so far, no complaint. And uh, I can hear like today, it's like it is warming up to tell us spring is somewhere around the corner coming. All these things are good for us, so thank you very much. I want to, this morning, begin with a short story. There was a young man, but this young man was very poor. Although he was learned, he didn't have a job, and he couldn't even afford to get him a new cloth. And so he kept looking for a job here and there, here and there, and it's, you know, looking for a job sometimes is frustrating. You keep looking for a job, you don't get it. You keep going for interviews, you're not, you, you don't carry the day, others carry the day. All these kind of things have happened to us at one time or another. And so one morning, as he was walking in a farm and looking how crops are growing, somebody came and spoke to him. Young man, what's your name? My name is Tom. What are you doing here? No, I've been looking for a job, but because I cannot get it, I decided to come and make myself stretch free, stress free by looking at these crops here. And the gentleman was a little bit excited <coughs> and asked him, would you like to be working in this farm as a manager? And the boy was more excited. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And so the, uh, the young man was picked by the man, taken to the shop, and this man bought him some very nice suits. And told him now, because you're gonna become the manager of that farm, you'll always be on this suit. You look smart, you look good. So that you don't just look like those people who are farming in the farm, you just look good, smart, and a good tie. And so it was very fitting for him. And then he was taken to a very good office in the farm. This is your office. How happy was this young man? He was very, very happy. But this man told him, you see these old clothes of yours? Throw them away. You do not need them anymore. So the boy put the old clothes in, in a polythene paper bag like this and kind of did not know where to trash it. So in the farm, <laughs> he found a, a kind of a, a bush somewhere. And so he went and pushed his old clothes in that bush there. And so the, the owner of the farm just went away. And now the boy was very happy, the young man was very happy and he was working very, very well, very well. He was excellent in managing the farm. But something kept coming to his mind. All the time, something kept coming to his mind. The old clothes, the old clothes. And so from time to time, when he is free, he could run to the bush, get the old clothes, and then come and put them on and remove the suit. And then he could go and look at the mirror and look at himself. And he used to kind of, oh, did I exactly look like this? You know, she, he couldn't believe. Did I exactly look like this? Oh, 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 my, my, my. And then he could remove the old clothes, put on the good suit, return the clothes to the bush. And he kept on doing that. <laughs> he kept on reminding himself. Something came to his mind all the time about the old clothes. All the time, something is coming about the old clothes. And every time that voice comes, he would go and grab the old clothes and then run to the mirror. Oh my, my, I can't believe it. Did I exactly look like this? Looking at the mirror. And one afternoon, when he had just grabbed those old clothes and he's now laughing at himself at the mirror, how he used to look like, the big boss comes in <laughs> and finds him in the old clothes. 
and he was very, very disappointed. And he had no option but to tell the young man, if this is how you behave here, you are fired. The job was over. My story has come to an end. So now, <laughs> change. <laughs> change is what I want us to reflect on. From time to time, we are very, very happy and good and saying change is good. And every time we will speak about change is good. Surely it is good. Even sometimes we'll go on and say <laughs> change is inevitable. And we will speak it because change surely is inevitable. We'll go on and say change is as good <laughs> as rest. <laughs> And we'll continue speaking about it. But I want to tell you the truth. <laughs> All of us has a problem. A voice will come on into our minds after we have seen that change is good, change is inevitable, change is as good as rest. Something will keep on coming into our mind. A voice will keep on coming. And it will lead us into resisting the same change that we say it is good. <laughs> The same change that we say it is inevitable, the same change we say that it is as good as rest, a voice will keep coming on to us <laughs> and letting us remember <laughs> the former. And we resist the change. Has it happened to you like that? <laughs> we do. It has happened. And so when I was reading the first lesson, I saw the children of Israel, God delivering them out of the land of Egypt. And now they are in the wilderness. And in the wilderness, the voice comes about Egypt. <laughs> and now they start complaining in the wilderness because they have started now resisting the change. Oh, Moses, why did you have to come and bring us here? Oh, we remember how we used to live in Egypt the old life, and they quarreled in the wilderness. And it was so, so difficult for Moses in the wilderness. It is not any other thing, it is that voice that kept taking them back just like that young man to the old clothes. Although he had a completely wonderful suit to keep working in the farm, he kept listening to that voice and going back to that voice and taking the old clothes and putting it on again. We also have those kind of voices. The children of Israel had that voice and Moses had to struggle with them in the wilderness. They went even ahead to quarrel Moses, showing Moses here we are going to die. In Egypt, we could not have died over there. Yet they were suffering there in Egypt change, resistance to change. It was not enough. Paul is doing the same thing with the Corinthians. And the message of the cross is not sailing through to the Christians in Corinth. It is very, very difficult. Why? Because they want to live in their old life. They do not want to live in the new life of the cross. And so Paul had to come out again because he could see that resistance in them. And it's hard to tell them the message of the cross. It's foolishness to those who are perishing, to those who are holding on to the old values. See how this young man who had a very good job now lost his job. So the message of the cross to those who are holding on to those other values will look like foolishness. But to those who hold the value of the cross, to them, it is God's power. So Paul again was struggling with people who are so hard. Although they say change is good, although they say change is as good as rest, although they say change is inevitable, now the voice spoke to them and they resist, even the cross. So Jesus, same thing. <laughs> so he is now, it's about the Passover, and Jesus is walking into the temple, and he's finding mess in the temple. 
And now he's trying now to tell the people, no, 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 no. We don't have to do the things the old way. And he is causing mess like this. Because the leaders then, those people who used to go to the temple, they were so resistant to change. All the time. And therefore, like we may know from biblical history, whatever event was taking in the temple, it was not illegal. It used to happen. It used to happen all the time. Now, there were festivals that those people used to observe. They were annual festivals. And because people used to travel from far to come to the temple, so they could find some things for sale, including food and all this kind of thing. And so there was that kind of trade because of people traveling from far. So it was not really <laughs> a very bad thing. But here is the thing. These people now had focused so much on the money. They had focused so much on the business. I think they were making some good money. And then they forgot that the temple is not just about money. It's about spirituality. It's about listening to the word of God. It's about being transformed by the word of God. And therefore, it was like it is business more than it is worship. It is business more than it is spiritual growth. It is business more than it is uniting people to God together. And that is what made Jesus angry. And this is why he is turning out the tables to let these people know time for change has come. It is now no longer the value of this. It is now being changed and being transformed by God's word. So here we are today. How much do we struggle with this very powerful word that is called change? How much are we open to change? How much do we resist when change comes about us? So Jesus Christ is turning the table so that the manifestation of God's power is now experienced by everyone who is witnessing this. I think what Jesus is doing, his, his action is just being bent over to those who were barriers to God's people, who could not allow them receive the transformation from God, who could not allow them receive revival from God, who could not allow them receive salvation from God because of these very, very powerful and structures of the world. The powerful structures of that business. But now, Jesus is saying there's something else. We need spirituality. We need revival. We need salvation. We need the grace of God so that after we are transformed by this, we are good enough to give service to people's, to God's people, the service of God. And so that is our calling. And every time change is coming, let us be very careful about that voice. Because if that voice dominates, we will lose. <laughs> We will lose. The young man lost his job. We will lose. We must be very careful about that voice. And so when God's power is being manifested, let us not listen to that small voice that makes us resist. Let us be transformed by the power of God. Because the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Indeed, it is to those who hold on to the powers and structures of this world. And they forget that there is another power, there is another value, there is another structure that is heavenly. So we must not hold the values of this world and forget there is another power. And that is what Jesus is ministering through doing what he is doing in the temple. And it is that power that changes us 
It is that power that gives us ability not to resist change. It is that power that makes us a new people. It is that power that convinces us of salvation. It is that power that guides us to the cross. And to us, the cross is not foolishness. The cross is the power of God. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
akademik danışlık, ticaret zeytin olabilir. Kafi, Mark, Benjamin, Andrew, Sharon, Jackson, Dean, George, Adam, Tim, Heidi, Haley, Eric, Diane, Laura, and Timothy. And for those serving in the military, Caleb. Now join me in the prayer on our journey. Lord, thank you for helping us to get to where we are today. We be grateful for giving you guidance as we travel on our journey of faith. Give us eyes to see the possibilities before us, ears to hear you and each other, and voices to effectively and lovingly communicate one to another. We seek wisdom, Lord, in our decision making, enabling us to get beyond our doubts and uncertainties. Grant us patience and strength on our journey as we seek your perfect will and guidance. We thank you, Lord, for being our guide throughout this journey. And may the knowledge and love of God be the center of our foundational life. Amen. Your word is a lamp for our feet. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for all countries at war and for an end to the violence and oppression throughout the world. We pray for all peoples not facing hunger, poverty, and oppression of any kind. We pray for all who face discrimination and violence because of their race, nationality, sexual orientation, gender, and religious belief. Amen. Please join in this prayer offered by us. Bishop and Malam of Jerusalem. O God of all justice and peace, we cry out to you in the midst of the pain, the trauma, the violence, the fear which prevails in the whole land. Be with those who need you in these days of suffering, that you pray for people of all faiths, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and for all people of the land. Why we pray to you, O Lord, for an end to violence and the establishment of peace, and also call for you to bring justice and equity to your people. Guide us into your kingdom, where all people are treated with dignity and honor, as your children, Lord, and Lord, for all of us. You are our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Together, a prayer for the election of a bishop. Almighty God, Give you are every good gift, look graciously on your church, and then so guard the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people, many of us are our ministries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lamp for our feet. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us ever follow Mighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, <clears throat> mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we Amen. confess. <clears throat> The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of the Lord always be with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. <clears throat> so walk in love as Christ loved us and gives himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Amen. Not there, not there. My hands. My hands. And then you go for the offertory, okay? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of the interstellar, interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets, and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. <coughs> From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. <coughs> Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he us. By his and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them the glory, your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might,
And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. Give thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God, our Father, and Abba of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your, work, your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may walk through serve the, the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, O God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit, your, uh, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, cup of salvation. The gift of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ has died for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So inside here, for those who are worshiping with us maybe for the first time, there is grape and there is wine. The grape is the gold color and is it purple or the red? Yeah. The red is the wine. So thank you very much. All are welcome. And this one I think is for um, Okay. All right. Sick, sick, so 
Sometimes I feel discouraged, I fear my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. I raise a in Gilead to take the wounded holy Sabbath in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul if you are You can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for Elias to heal the wounded soul Elias to see the sin sick soul. Don't ever be discouraged for Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to learn. Lisa to make the wounded whole there is a bomb in Gilead to kill the sin sick soul. The post communion prayer together, mighty and ever living God. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection through Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen.
keep the cross. I get a thumbs up today. Mm -hmm. for me today I don't know why it was too warm for me I don't know why I'm, I'm sweating I'm very warm <laughs> So now it's the moment for the announcement, if any. So thank you all for showing up. Uh, God bless all of you and have a blessed week. Dismiss you. Yes. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Happy Sunday.